Hello dear children and welcome to your favorite ma'am. So today we are going to start a very interesting topic, moon. And I hope to clear all your doubts by the end of this video. So let's move forward. As we know, there are eight planets in our solar system. Earth is the third planet from the sun and it along with seven other planets move around the sun. Similarly, the moon also moves around the earth. It is our closest neighbor in space. It is 3,84,000 kilometers away from the earth. Now the moon completes its revolution around the earth in 27.3 days. It is the only natural satellite of the earth. It is much smaller than the sun. It looks big because it is closer to us. Now let's talk about the surface of the moon. The surface of the moon is nothing like here on earth. It's totally lacking any evidence of life. The surface of the moon is rough and uneven and has a variety of pebbles, rocks and boulders. It has great plains and big mountains and many craters which were formed when meteorites crashed into the moon's surface. For any life to survive, we need the minimum of two things. One is air and the other is water. As the moon has no air and water, there is no life on the moon. Also, since there is no atmosphere, there is no protection against the strong rays of the sun. So the side of the moon facing the sun is very hot and the side facing away from it is very cold. Hence nothing can live on the moon as the living conditions on the moon are inhabitable. A mission that many said was impossible became a reality on July 20th, 1969 for Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon and Edwin Buzz Aldrin who joined him 19 minutes later. Neil Armstrong and Aldrin walked around on the moon for three hours and created history. Coming on to another person who created history on April 3rd, 1984 was a young man by the name of Captain Rakesh Sharma. He was the first Indian to fly in space and he spent almost eight days in space. When former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi asked Rakesh Sharma how India looked from the outer space, all he had to say was, Sari jaha se achha hindu sita hamara. So on this note, why don't you go and hit the like button? In everyday talk, we say things fall because the Earth's gravity pulls on them. Similarly, like Earth, Moon also has its own gravity. But since the Moon is much smaller than the Earth, the pull of the gravity on the Moon is about one-sixth that of Earth. So any object on the Moon weighs one-sixth of its weight on Earth. So if your weight is 30 kg on the Earth, it will be only 5 kgs on the Moon. Nearly three-fourths of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans. Every day, where ocean meets the land, the water level rises and falls. These rhythmic rising and falling movements of the ocean water are known as tides. The gravitational forces of the Sun and the Moon combine to pull the Earth's water causing tides. Since the Moon is much closer to the Earth than the Sun, the Moon's pull on the water is much more than that of the Sun. The water of seas and ocean on the side of the Earth facing the Moon is attracted upwards and causes high tides. The same happens on the opposite side of the Earth. In the areas between the two high tides, the water form low tide because the water has moved to the region of higher tides. If you have looked into the night sky, you may have noticed the moon appears to change shape each night. Some nights the moon might look like a semicircle or a bright complete circle 
and on other nights you might not be able to see the moon at all. The different shapes of the moon that we see at different times of the month are called the moon's phases. The shape of our moon isn't changing throughout the month. However, our view of the moon does change. The moon does not produce its own light. There is only one source of light in our solar system and that is the sun. Without the sun, our moon would be completely dark. What you may have heard referred to as moonlight is actually just sunlight reflecting off of the moon's surface. The sunlight comes from one direction and it always illuminates or lightens up one half of the moon, the side of the moon that is facing the sun. The other side of the moon is dark. Now there are eight phases of moon. The first is the new moon, when we cannot see the moon at all. After that, the moon takes the shape of a thin crescent opening to the left. This phase is called waxing crescent. Waxing means it is getting bigger. Then the moon changes to become a semicircle, also known as the first quarter or a half moon. Then comes the phase of waxing gibbous, where the moon is slightly bigger than the half moon, but slightly less than the full moon. It further goes on to turn into a full moon. After the full moon, the moon takes the phase of waning gibbous, which is a phase between half moon and full moon. Waning here it means it is getting smaller. Then from the waning gibbous phase, it goes on to the third quarter. We see the third quarter moon as the half moon too. It is the opposite of the half as illuminated in the first quarter moon. After the waning gibbous phase, we see the moon entering into a waning crescent phase as a thin crescent opening to the right. And then the moon enters into a new moon phase again. The moon displays these eight phases one after the other as it moves through its cycle each month. It takes 27 days for the moon to orbit Earth. That means the moon cycle is 27 days long. The waxing phase of the moon goes from the new moon to the full moon. It starts with new moon and goes on to become a waxing crescent, then half moon, then waxing gibbous, then finally the full moon. The waning phases start from the full moon and goes from the full moon to the new moon. It entails full moon, then waning gibbous, half moon or the last quarter, waning crescent and finally the new moon. Now we will talk about a very interesting topic that is eclipses. So when the sun, the earth and the moon are in the same straight line, the sun's light falls on the earth and the moon, it casts shadows. That is an eclipse. Now there are two types of eclipses. Solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. Let's take up solar eclipse first. When the moon comes in between the sun and the earth and they all lie in the same plane, the moon will then cast a shadow on the earth and the people on some areas of the earth will not be able to see the sun for some time. It is called a total solar eclipse. A partial solar eclipse, however, is when the moon does not completely cover the sun. Similarly, when the earth comes in between the sun and the moon, the earth cuts off the light reaching the moon from the sun. So now the moon is completely hidden by the dark shadow of the earth. This is known as the lunar eclipse. So this is how a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse looks like. Even though we should never directly look at the sun during a solar eclipse even for a second because it will damage your eyesight forever. Now do you know that moon is the only natural satellite of the earth? But there are many man-made objects known as the artificial satellites which revolve around the earth like the moon. The first man-made satellite was Sputnik 1. It was sent into the space on 4th October 1957. 
Aryabhatta was India's first satellite. After that, India has launched many artificial satellites like Kalpana 1, Rohini and most recently GSAT-30, which was launched on 16th January 2020 to provide advanced telecommunication services to the Indian subcontinent. There are innumerable other purposes that these satellites serve. The first one is communication. For example, when you get a call from your friend who lives in the other part of the city or maybe the other part of the world. It is all because of the satellites and their ability to communicate to earth and back to other part of the world that you are able to talk to your friend. Satellites send down constant data from around the globe like temperature, rainfall, wind speed and cloud patterns. Meteorologists use this information to predict the weather. We are able to see the live news or that favorite cricket match of yours with the help of these satellites only. I am sure now you have heard of GPS. We all have it in our phones and use GPS to go to different places. It basically stands for Global Positioning System which with the help of satellites helps in navigation purposes. Now with the help of these amazing satellites only, we have been able to explore Earth's atmosphere, outer space and far beyond. India's first mission to moon was launched by a spacecraft named Chandrayaan-1 on October 22, 2008 from Sri Harikota. And India's second mission to moon was Chandrayaan-2, which was a follow-up mission from the Chandrayaan-1 that assisted in confirming the presence of water on the moon in 2009. With this, we have completed the moon and everything about it. If you have liked the video, go ahead and press the like button and leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and share the channel for more interesting videos. Thank you.